Well, welcome again to the country church. Uh, uh, we're still putting these messages and uh, sermons online. I hope you uh, haven't stopped watching us. We haven't been on for a week or so. So and sometimes uh, other things uh, get in the way and so forth, but uh, we certainly want to welcome you back again today because it's a, it's a pleasure to minister to as many as we possibly can. Because I believe we're in a time when really the gospel has to get out. And uh, we need to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Paul says, I came not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us that are saved it is the power of God. Paul also said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And I want to confess I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. And uh, people need to hear the truth. You know, sometimes we go through, a, uh, we get kind of in a rut. We go through all our churchanity and we, uh, and so forth. And uh, we put our faith in what we have done you know, I got baptized as an infant. I, I uh, got confirmed. I joined the church. I do this in the church, and I do that. Look at all the eyes. But it's not about us at all. It's not what we have done. It's what Jesus Christ has done on the cross of Calvary that day. He took our sins upon him. He paid a debt that I could not pay. And we have to put our faith and trust and believe that Christ died for our sins and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So, but today I want to talk about something a little different. Uh, uh, probably not the most pleasant uh, message, but it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I think it's it's uh, it's a victorious message if we if we look at it. But uh, uh, I always tell my my people if you want to be blessed, read the uh, First Corinthians chapter fifteen. If you're a Christian today, you can't help but rejoice in it. I'll read a few verses here, starting with verse forty-five. And it said, it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the last, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. After, afterwards, that which is spiritual. The first man is, is, uh, is of the earth, is earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As the earthly, such are they are that are earthly, and as the heavenly, such are also those that are heavenly. And as we who are born uh, in the image of the earthly, earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. And this is this mystery is is the rapture of the church, and we'll probably get to that in First Thessalonians chapter four. But this is re, uh, referring to the rapture of the church. Uh, rapture means uptaking, the uptaking of the church. It says, "Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all die, but we shall all be changed at the moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the." The trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immor immortality, then that was brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where, where, is, where is thy victory? The sting of death is set, but the strength of the law is, is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. 
But thanks be to God that we have victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And I really didn't know how to title uh, this message. Basically, we'll have to probably call, think of a title yet, but we could uh, uh, title it as uh, How Do We Look at Death? Uh, and so forth. How do we face death? Or we could title it of, of Increasing Our Faith. I would basically prefer the latter, of course. And, uh, but uh, I define faith as simply just trusting God. Just believing what God said he done, he done. Just believing that God sent his only begotten son <laughs> that in him, if we receive him, we can have eternal life through him. Hebrews 9.27 says, Man is appointed once to die, and then the ju judgment. The morality rate is the same for all, whether they're great or small, whether uh, uh, they're high or low, you might say, or powerful or powerless. Uh, uh, we all are uh, famous or infamous. We all meet that day at appointment. I've got a sermon I'm going to preach one of these days on uh, God's three appointments. Uh, I ain't got it finished yet. So I understand, uh, you know, in a British museum in London, there's an ex ex <laughs> exhibit exhibitation of a, of a body of a man dehydrated by the hot sands of Egypt, uh, which he was buried. His body is in a crouching uh, position, uh, shaped like a question mark. Now, this basically uh, could define, uh, might, might define death. It could be a questionable thing, or it could cause confusion or worry or fear of the unknown. What we will experience, so we done, I done some research on how different some of the different beliefs about death. So I've done a little research, and I hope you don't get bored with this, but I, I just want to share a couple couple things. Uh, you see, the, the ancient Greeks examined the mystery of death and came up with this, uh, this answer. They decided that humans were kin of gods, they, uh, and therefore every person has a spark of divinity and is immortal. Well, you say, so good so far. The Greeks believed that a hu in human uh, a human lives lives in a body, and the body is matter, and all matter is evil. Inside that evil body, there lives a human soul and spirit that is good. So they saw humanity as a, a as a soul shut up in the in the cage of a body. They view death as a, as a liberation. When a person died, his soul was set free from his body and returned to the deity from which it came. The soul was then uh, uh, absorbed into that deity like a drop of water returning uh, basically uh, to the ocean by, by just by evaporation. And then, but the Greeks had no concept of the resurrection. They had no belief uh, uh, in a bodily resurrection. Uh, they think the body was evil. They, <laughs> they had no personal survival and they had no personal identity beyond death. Now the Hebrews understanding of death was very different from those of the Greeks. The Hebrews believed uh, uh, to, uh, in a place of existence after death that they called Shoal of the place of Hades. The earth was the place of humans and animals and heaven was the place 
of God and the angels. They had no concept of humans going to heaven where God was, but they knew humans did not remain on earth. Therefore, they spoke of Sheol or the grave or the pit. It was a place of shadow, shadowy existence after death. The thing is, there was no personal identity there also. The Greeks saw death as an escape for the immortal soul. The Hebrews saw death as a shadowy existence into basically nothingness. Now, we could go on and on, and we could have lots of different groups and even denominations view death uh, in a different way. I won't name them, but you probably uh, know of some of, of some believe in purgatory, some believe in uh, uh, soul sleeping, some believe this, some believe that. When you uh, when you die, there's different concepts, uh, even in our today, in our denominations, about death. But the New Testament Christian, I'm saying the New Testament Christian concept of death is different from many other groups. The Christian view of death centers on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Wow! For John 1, 12 says, But as to many as received him, to them he gives them the power to become the sons of God, even to those that believe on his name. Jesus said, when we believe on him and receive him, we have eternal life. Praise God. I mean, beginning now, 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 when you receive him as your Lord and Savior, when you are born again, eternal life begins. Now, not someday, not when we die, but now, now. I, I just want to put uh, stress that. You see, for 46 years, I lived in the natural. I was born again when I was 46 years old. But I lived that natural life without, without any problem. It was not hard for me to live that life. I just followed, you might say, humanity, the natural life. It was natural for me to do the things that I'd done. When we become born again, when we, the Spirit of the living God comes to live and to dwell with us, I should uh, develop a, a, a relationship with God that I live my life naturally as a Christian not having to work at it so hard, but it becomes a natural instinct, you might say. It's more than an instinct, but that was, we'll use that word. It's natural for me to, to be spiritual. It's natural for me to confess Jesus Christ. It's natural for me to do uh, the things of God and so forth just as natural as it was for me back here in the flesh for 46 years to live it. I didn't struggle to live that life. I don't, shouldn't have to struggle to live the Christian life. Because if I, if, I, if I try so hard, it becomes a works thing instead of God working through us. Uh, that, that's kind of a different sermon. I kind of got off track here, but, but that's kind of a different sermon. But the New Testament Christian centers on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, John 1, 12 says, yes. Uh, Jesus said, when we believe on him and we receive him, we have eternal life beginning now. In fact, the Bible says, if you have not the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. You are none of his. You will have you will have a personal identity. We will know each other <laughs> in eternity in, in heaven. We will know each other. Christians, because of the resurrection and the appearance of Jesus after his resurrection, 
do not have to doubt or be confused or for or fear or be, be, be uh, blind about life after death. 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 8 says, When Christ rose from the dead, he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, and then seen of above 500 brethren at once. Just in 1 John 1, 4, I want to read that. 1 John, uh, 1 John's at the back of your Bible here. I got it marked here. 1 through 4. John is, writes this. John uh, spent time with Jesus. John walked with Jesus. In fact, John was one of the disciples that Jesus loved. And John laid his head on his chest, and cetera, and cetera. But John is writing this. He says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and, and, and it will show it unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was shown unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also have fellowship with us. And there, our fellowship truly is with the Father and, the, and His Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write unto you, that your joy may be full. It was so real. You can, you can read that and you can almost, almost feel it. You might say, as if I was sitting right beside you. And you were sitting beside me. Uh, it, it was so real to him, you might say, at that time. So uh, uh, just as real as, as you and I visiting with each other and sitting beside each other. Praise God. It was so real. Jesus, John writes that, that to us that, that our joy, that our joy may be full. He said, Basically, John's saying, I want you to experience this, that your joy may be full. I want to assure you <laughs> that, that your joy uh, may be full, that we know that he was victorious over death, over hell, and the grave. Jesus told Martha, I think it was in John chapter 11 or so, uh, Jesus told Martha, I'm the resurrection and the life. Whoso believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoso liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then Jesus said, do you believe this? Do you believe this? <laughs> so, for 2 Corinthians 5, 8, it says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. See, death is like two faces. It's like the, like the Roman god Janus from where we get January. Like two faces, one looking back to old, you might say old year and new year. That's where we get the, get the, uh, the word January from Janus to god Janus. With the two faces, one facing this way, one facing backward, one facing forward. You might say a new year and an old year. And uh, see, Janus had uh, uh, death from the, see death from the human point of view looks like defeat and tragedy, but but from God's point of view, death is viewed as victory or and triumph. Uh, in Psalm six one sixteen fifteen, it says, "Precious is the sight of the Lord, the death of His saints." Death is like blowing out a candle or shutting off an artificial light because the dawn has come. It's a new day. The sun has risen. <laughs> Glory to God. It's a new day. The sun has risen. We step right into eternity. And it's a new day. It's another experience in the presence of God. No reason to fear death, 
The resurrection means death has died. Death. The resurrection means death has died. Everyone who places their faith in Jesus Christ will rise and be clothed with immortality and live forever in the presence of God. 1 Thessalonians 4, and I, I mentioned this before, 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, And the Lord himself shall descend with a shout uh, from heaven, and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us which are alive and remain shall caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then it says, comfort one another with these words. That's referring to the rapture or the uptaking of the church. And I believe that is going to be before the great tribulation because the Bible tells us we are not appointed unto wrath, but victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. It's just another, another uh, uh, thing that we can rejoice in the Lord, that we can thank the Lord for, that we can be thankful and praise Him, that we can walk around and we can say, thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Jesus. Because one of these days, he's coming back. But first of all, he's coming back for his people. And he's going to take them up. He won't come down to earth at this time. But we will meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Oh, I get excited about that. I get excited about that. You see, this hope belongs to every born-again believer. You see, do you have this hope, Christ in you, the hope of glory? I said all of this, that our faith may abound and increase more and more. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily besets us. Now, you may be thinking of some personal thing that in your life that you have to probably uh, lay aside, uh, whatever that, basically, whatever that thing may be. But the writer of Hebrew here is not referring to a different sin for every person, but referring to the sin that we're all guilty of, of unbelief. The sin of unbelief is the sin that God's people have been guilty of through the ages. Look at the Israelites. We believe uh, uh, unbelief robs the church of its power and hinders God's purpose for our lives. We depend too much on human strength and intellect, so to speak. Faith is a gift of God and something we need to develop and activate as we believe his promises. What he promised us, he says, he is able to perform. I believe we're at a time where we need to trust God more and more. I know I do. I need to work at that more and more. I think we can help each other do this, uh, to build up, edify each other, encourage each other hold up uh, each other's hands, so to speak. Oh, where, where was it when, when uh, Aaron and, uh, and her held up Moses' hands? I forget where, I think it's in Exodus somewhere. But, but when, when Moses got weary and his hands went down, then, then the enemy would prevail. But then Aaron and her, her would hold up his hands and then there was victory. I think that's a good example that as Christians, we need to hold up each other. We need to edify. We need to, to encourage one another. We need to build each other up. We must never forget that we have that blessed hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes life on this old earth is, is the pit. 
and we come uh, we come across tragedies. We come things uh, probably tragedies in the families, or even ourselves have uh, developed some sort of physical infirmity in our bodies and so forth. And life can can be difficult, but never get your eyes off that blessed hope of what Jesus Christ has done for you. Whether we live or die, we're the Lord's. Praise God. You see, the world doesn't have that because the world does not have the Spirit of Christ. I preached that here just recently, but you do. He said, the Spirit shall be uh, uh, with you and he shall be in you. The Bible says, wherefore let him that Thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. We must be reminded of the scripture, Hebrews 10.25, Forsake not the assembling together as so much more as you see the day approaching. What day? The day of the coming of the Lord. And as I listened to other uh, ministers and uh, basically men and women of God, uh, it seems to be ringing across the earth at this time. Jesus is coming soon. He's coming soon. You know, if we, if you, if we are aware of what's happening in our world today and what the Bible says, the day of the Lord is near, even at the doors. So let's keep our eyes on the uptick and not on the undertaker. Amen? We trust God for the salvation of our souls through death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Let us also trust Him in our daily life and decisions and responsibilities and help each other that our faith may remain strong. You have that blessed hope do you have that hope and help? No matter what the circumstances, no matter what pops up into our lives, good or bad, you have that hope. You have that future to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ because, all because, he gave his life that we could have life. God bless you and have a great day. Amen.